Welcome to the Special Delivery Podcast. I am your host, Special, and on this show, I do one of two things. Either I'm highlighting brand new music that's just dropped, or I'm sitting down with artists to break down their latest project, and that is what we're doing today. Abjo joins us to break down everything you don't know and should know about his latest project, Chroma. We talk about everything from the idea behind the title, what the different colors mean, the sounds that he used, the instruments he played, his favorite track, and collaborating with other artists. Plus, we talk about his latest Odessa remix and working with Fonte on his album, No News is Good News. So let's get into it. Here with Abjo. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to talk about Chroma. Dang. It's out. <laughs> you got to take us through the vision behind the title, how you came up with it, the colors, the cover art, all of that stuff. What was that exploration like? It was like a homework, like like a project. It was like my, what do they call those? Your like senior project before you have to like. Oh, like your thesis? Like oh, your thesis. senior project. You know, you know that, yeah, you know that like project you have to do before you graduate. They have, you have to do this like to prove that you learned something in school. That's kind of what Chroma is to me. It's like putting like my best foot forward so that it's my calling card. I didn't really take it so seriously that it was like, oh my God, this is like this amazing project that I just put out. It was more like okay, I'm really good at this. Let me show you how good I am at this. I'm going to put together eight really dope tracks and get a really dope, you know, art. Like, the whole is a project. It's not just an EP or anything to me or, like, a some release that I put out. It's a whole project that I put together to show how good I am at what I do. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Where did the idea behind the colors come from, though? Because the cover is beautiful. And then even in the track listing, like, I think you're putting kids on to colors that they didn't even know. Because some of those colors, I'm like, oh, wait, what? Like, I don't know what color this is. So what was the idea behind that? I don't know how, how hyped everybody is about, like, the Pantone scale. Mm. And how I was kind of inspired by Pharrell and his, like, you know, his, his thing about colors, too. And synesthesia and, you know, seeing sounds, that kind of thing. So I, I was inspired by that. And I decided to take and make my own flip of it. The art itself is inspired by an artist that actually Selection has, has worked with in the past before. So Modern Hieroglyphics. But they just work with him to do covers with this guy named Rick Ostenbrook. His art is incredible. And I've worked with the artist and the graphic designers with, with them to basically recreate some of his work and put it on my cover. And that was the result, pretty much. Chroma, I mean, it, it literally means color, right? So... It was just an easy idea, I think, I came up with. Like I said, this is my senior project. I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want to get too complicated. I just want to do something that translates well, that's easy, that people can be like, oh, this is a cool little idea. This is dope. You know, I've never thought about doing that. It's easily digestible. But also, oh, this is tight. Like, I like this idea. Or I can hear the color in the sound. Like, you know, Hyacinth is kind of a bluish, purple-ish. So maybe when you're listening to the track, you can kind of hear the bluish purple and shit. When you hear anthracite, you know, it's black. It's actually a stone, actually, or something like that. It's a, it's a kind of ore, which is very black. So it's a dark, very dark sounding track, right? Or then you have uh, Indigo, the last track, which is like kind of an like encompassing all colors for the most part. And so you get in the track, you know, it starts kind of like housey and stuff like that. And it's got like a groove and it's very funky and like disco. And then... It ends with like more of a kind of a trap kind of a feel or more like, you know, future beats kind of see. So it covers all the ground. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's like I said, putting my best foot forward, like demonstrating how good I am at what I do. (laughs) So I think we will get started with my favorite, which is Cyan. It's bubbly, but bouncy. You got the girl vocals and then even like the record sounds to it. What was it like making that one? Obviously, I stole the little drum loop from Juicy Notorious B.I.G. You say obviously. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, it literally starts with that. And it's my recreation of it, obviously. It's, it's not the actual track. I actually made, I like pan-picked those sounds, right? Oh. And it's funny because I, I actually was originally going to like drop some little remix version of Juicy with that beat. Mm. And I said, you know, it's fine on its own. I don't need vocals to really go over this. So I just kind of went in that direction going more like, Cyan is, is a bluish, but it's like a light bluish, like a sky blue. 
so when you're listening to it, I'm hoping you're getting this idea. You're kind of like driving with the drop top down at like seven o'clock and the sun's coming down, that kind of thing, right? And that's the ste- that's essentially the season I was going for. But I wanted it to be like like yacht rock, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to kind of cross paths with like that kind of yacht rock steed. So that's where the guitar comes in. And, you know, that's an inspiration I got from like Pat Metheny and like, well, no, he's not yacht rock, but anyway, so that's, like I said, that's where the inspiration comes from. I'm kind of like paying homage to that kind of sound, that kind of steed, but also putting my little spin on it. And then, he, you know, there's a couple tracks, including that one, that kind of segue and transitions like another version of the track itself. Mm-hmm. And that's the same idea. So I picked up like a bunch of random little like blurbs from like women like talking. So if you listen real close, it's saying, I love you. Do you love me too? be extra careful with him he's an extra you know he's a gentleman blah 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 and so it's kind of like my little spin on like the after the night is done kind of thing too so it's it's a time thing you know every part of this little ep has is connected to a color it's connected to a time it's connected to a sound connected to a color one way or another so that it's all kind of encompassing when you listen to it it's like everything I do, it's a story. It's in linear fashion. Oh, I love it. But I also feel like you just read my birth chart or something <laughs> without me even like realizing like, oh, that's my favorite. And I can't really like pinpoint why. But then you're like, oh, it, it has the juicy drums and it's Yacht Rock. Oh, my God. You just described my childhood. This is crazy. You know, then that's me, too. You know, I mean, I grew up on all kinds of music. I grew up on, on a lot of funk. I grew up on a lot of disco. I grew up on a lot of, you know, j- a lot of jazz. But Yacht Rock was, you know, my corny ass dad from Compton loves Pat Metheny. He loves Michael McDonald. You know what I'm saying? And again, that's where the inspiration came from. Simple as that. I love it so much. And then speaking of like the woman's vocals that you use, Rose, it almost feels like you sampled Indian music, like Bollywood music, but maybe that was just me. What was the kind of construction of that one? That was me flexing on my ability to like create space in a track. And I know when you can listen to it, it feels like your ears are like popping off. It's like very binaural because all the sounds are going like literally left and right the entire time, um, including the pizzicatos, which um, those are actually me playing the like pizzicatos. And I recorded them with the homies in San Diego who had a violin and it came out so clean. It was so dope that I can actually literally take them and play the chords with the sounds that I made. So um, I did that and I kind of stole from Monty Booker the kind of the way that the track was like arranged and the way it kind of bumps. But so shout out to Monty Booker. I really love the way that he kind of organizes his sound. He picks them so perfectly, like the way it fits in its own little register, each single sound. And so that was kind of my thing was, okay, how can I make this track as orally pleasing to the ears Mm -hmm. and also knock like hella hard Mm -hmm. which is i mean that's the whole album but that was like (laughs) for that particular track that's what i wanted to do the most with because it was just perfect and then the you're getting like the bali sounds or like the balinese kind of sounding like the indian bollywood Mm -hmm. also kind of sounding too i don't remember i even picked up that vocal it's like sitting with a bunch of random like found sounds that i have from a pack i've had sitting around for like years and i found that one i've never used it before and i was like what oh i have but i this is like the only other track that i've used it for and i fell in love with it so that kind of became like the center part initially it wasn't going to end up on the track and then I threw it on there and it kind of just fit and it was perfect because it just the steez that I was going for wasn't necessarily exotic but intrinsically the sound itself is kind of the way it sounds like the way it actually hits your ears is, is maybe exotic so it worked with the sound the, the track all together that's my favorite track on the whole thing I think just so anybody knows I love that you played the instrument are there any other instruments that you played on this project I'm trying to remember there's probably I know there's at least a little bit of piano in there everything in there i played obviously because i there's no like real samples in there but that was one in particular I actually sampled myself playing something that was like the only one like that that i did that for and then on a total flip side how does Lil john end up on anthrax <laughs> I was originally going to read, that's another one that I was going to end up remixing with Usher's Yeah. Uh, 
And so I, instead of obviously remixing the whole song or remixing the parts that I was going to into the song, I just took his little ad libs, which I love. Like those are, if you're born before 1990, that has to be one of your favorite ad libs ever. Yes. Fuck Amigos ad lib, fuck a Young Thug ad lib. Lil John had the best at just yell, <laughs> literally just yelling. Yeah, was the shit. So that was my like kind of ode to that, and it just worked out. It's um. Anthracite is another one of my favorites too because I was really going for like just straight banger, mm -hmm. you know, and I missed, I do so many little like very like nice sounding and oh, this is very intricate, blah, blah, blah. And Abjo makes like very, you know, complex and dreamy sounding music. I'm like, no, I make some hard ass shit too. You know what I'm saying? It's not even about trying to prove a point. It's more, more than saying like I needed to have, have a track on this album that just was purely about like blowing up your speaker. Mm -hmm. You know, so hence anthracite. And I love how you talked about like anthracite is like super black. And you think about Lil John, like that really defines like an era of blackness. So it like does, it yeah. comes together. That whole yeah, so it all comes it and that was my exact intention with that. Like I said, like every color you can read in every track a bunch of different things, but at the end of the day, the color, the sound, it all coordinates. So it's never everything is handpicked. I didn't like it didn't happen by accident. None of it, everything is on purpose with this this whole thing. If it sounds like, oh, this is then it is. I guarantee you. I thought about it for a long time. What you just said right now is completely right. Well, we're gonna test that because I listened and I got some interesting interpretations. So I'm gonna run those by you. Okay. Let's get started with Carnelian. Okay. It's kind of trippy and like you almost made the scratches sound like what we're trained to think like a UFO or alien sound like. <laughs> That's what I got from that one. So carnelian is like a reddish color. And what I was going for was more kind of like, not dance hall. I was inspired by like a kind of like the feel is very like a little bit dance holly, but it's also, it's like future beats. And so I don't really know if, if that was necessarily the intention per se, but around that, I was definitely trying to get this idea that like you were maybe not here on earth for a minute. And with the red, I was kind of imagining myself when I thought of the color carnelian, I was thinking of Mars and the kind of milky reddish kind of, so that was like the whole steez behind it. And so it ended up with me kind of getting inspired by listening to a bunch of different soundtracks. So it was like that. And then the combination of that and listening to a bunch of different like soundtracks from like, from my favorite shows and stuff. So like mm -hmm. Stranger Things, Walking Dead, especially those particular sounds from those two shows, they use really like gritty, like, but clean and incredible sounding synths to like purvey this kind of like darkness about them, you know? But it's beautiful. In th that same instance, I really wanted to like flex the ability to make something that, again, is very complex and intricate, but also just like knocks. And you know what I'm saying? That's, that's me all day anyway. So I said, it wasn't too different from anything else I did, except for that I, I really wanted to, like I said, convey that color red, that reddish color, and, and be able to like balance the like the beauty of it and the elegance of the track with the kind of like weird like almost literally like uncomfortable like spacey like am i here on earth or am i not am i like where am i at right now then let's talk about grayscale in the switch up mm -hmm. it almost sounds like a train sound or like a cartoon train or something <laughs> along those lines like if thomas the train, the train was, yeah. was fucking dope and he was like killing shit yeah. That's what I heard from that one. What was the approach to that one? So I started that track with Ledge Kale in New York. I was there like last year sometime and we were playing around with this the centerpiece that's that sound, the little synth is um in the first part is a moog that we were playing around with and so I just came up with that little melody and just kind of built the track off of that. Grayscale is 
it covers a whole spectrum of like black to white pretty much Mm -hmm. but in doing so i wanted it to kind of be like okay i start to track off it's like pretty like gray like it's sounding it's very almost muffled maybe so that's what i thought when i with the gray it's almost like kind of like like a video game or whatever but it's like kind of trappy or whatever and the train sound that you're getting is kind of like me going from it's think about i'm starting off and i'm going into the tunnel Mm -hmm. that's the first part then you come in and that's so it's going from like uh, kind of light gray to like mid dark gray mm-hmm. then you're getting to the, the train part you're talking about mm-hmm. is kind of like me like coming out that's like the light at the end of the tunnel so it's now we're getting to like being whiter instead of darker mm-hmm. and so now you see the light at the end of the tunnel so it, i was actually really going more for something more like a kind of yellow like sunlight kind of thing like light sky blue so when you hear the that end part come out it's kind of like you're like you got to the darkest part and then like there finally you see the light in the tunnel and you're like chugging chugging and kind of you know then the bass and, the, and everything kicks and like oh i'm back in the sunlight so you this perfect like dark to light situation covering both ends of the grayscale spectrum it's fucking incredible like now i gotta go listen to it again because halfway went on those journeys but now to be like completely tuned in and to go through the stories and the journeys oh shit i'm like it oh this is crazy yeah but it's a demonstration in, in movement so that's was the point of that you start there and it's, it's on the same pace you know start to finish but it starts very like you kind of like are wondering where you're going but you're definitely going somewhere and then it gets a little crazier and then it gets a little crazier it's like it's kind of like going through hyperspace mountain and then you come out the end and don't know what the hell just happened but here's sunlight you know what i'm saying like that's so that's what i was going for and then speaking of ledge scale and jr those are the two people that you worked with how did you work with them like what did that look like working with them with ledge shout out to ledge scale a young cat with with a lot of really 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 dope ideas i can't wait to see what else he comes up with he was just letting me play around with stuff and kind of just he directed me for a second like hey let's try this let's try this and i was listening to him make his version of the beat so we were kind of like making the beats like two different beats side by side and then i said you know what let's take the best of both parts and throw them together and so that's how great show came out but the last part is all mine and it was something he was like you should throw this in there and mix it in with the track somehow and so that was his idea so it was a a collaboration of directing of of two two directors putting together something instead of like i'm making the beat and he's you know it was he produced it and i directed how i don't know how you how that worked that the hierarchy i guess but for the most part it was less of a him instructing me or me instructing him to do and we were definitely literally like collaborating the whole thing and he let me get away with most of the the composition for the most part but it was definitely his idea to use the sounds that that, that i did which i'm glad because i could have went another direction with that and i don't think it would have fit the like grayscale steez but he thought it was a good idea to use that moog sound and keep it like more in the gray right and to use that like kind of train sound and sound because it like i said it's like moving it's even though it's not it's not getting faster or slower you get the idea like with everything that thing speeds up with every like additional sound and then once you get to that part it's like oh yeah now all of a sudden i'm moving faster because i'm just trying to get out the tunnel you know what i'm saying and i explained that to him too so he get he got it like that that was also part of the collaboration too like he understood where i was trying to go with making the track feel like you were again going from start to finish somewhere and then jr i'm a huge fan of his he did a remix of signs which is like one of my all-time favorite songs Oh my god, it's so good. What was it like working with him? JR is one of my favorite people to work with. Me and him are on the same page about pretty much everything. So when we do stuff, it's very like easy. You know, it's it's like nothing. And I think one of the things that I like about working with him the most is that he's not afraid to just jump on something and try it like it doesn't matter what it is we can both find ourselves like sitting around like okay we don't know what to do yet but he's not afraid to just throw something in there to see what happens indigo was a lot parts him actually to be honest the way i try to approach like housey sound and stuff and like drums i'm not entirely confident in my ability to convey a groove like that even though i know that i'm i'm very much capable but like to do it without being 
so complicated because I can always get to be like maybe a little extra. <laughs> and so like people know me to be like, you got like fucking seven, eight different things going on at once. I can't even focus on one thing. So he helped me do that to be able to do what I do like that, but also convey like the simplicity of it. So like I said, he threw in that little like, wah, wah, you know, he threw in the, you know, um, the piano sound, which is, which basically carried the entire track, the little like over and over kind of like, that so that was his idea the simplicity of it it's very easy to work with him because he doesn't try to do anything more than make something sound dope and with two or three different things you know it's not like me trying to like piece together here 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 and now you have the track he's like blow blow let's work with that throws down some drums he's very very good at programming drums so I, I let him handle it was him pretty much on the drums i just arranged everything for the most part and then we came together on the last part the part that like flips before we get to like the little kind of like when the bass kicks in and stuff and um like i said he's just he's one of my favorite collaborators especially when producing something for sure for that exact reason i love it before we get into the other great stuff you've been working on anything else you want to tell the people about chroma i don't know man. it's just just like anything that you like listen to you know, if you take it seriously like I do, you know, whether it's in your car or listen on your headphones or, you know, in your house with your speakers or whatever, like listen to it, like take your time to really, this is, this is something you can just throw on in the background. That's cool. Cause it definitely works, but really take the time to listen to this. I really want people to just like feel this out. I'm not pushing on it on you to like think of anything more of it than just to enjoy it pretty much. And that's always the end game for me for especially as a producer I, I pride myself on being able to make music that people can just listen to and just be like this is dope it takes my mind off of shit or you know uh it makes me feel good or blah 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 and then it's like i said this is my senior project <laughs> you know so i wasn't trying to do, do, go too crazy i'm i was trying you know simplicity the arrival of genius is simplicity or something like that you know what i'm saying so that's so that's what i was going for i didn't want it to be too extra i but i also didn't want it to to not have my traditional signature stamp on it i'm very proud of this and yeah so dope like you literally took those out of my mouth and i've probably told you this before but like it's so dope that you can vibe out to it and do whatever do homework clean the house whatever or you can really tap in and like take that journey and i think that's what's so powerful about your music is like it's for the casual listener or it's for somebody who really wants to dive in so to yeah. have both of those also like to make complex music without it being distracting you'll listen to some people's music and you're like okay this is so deep that i can't even do anything else but like <laughs> you cover the spectrum of okay you can do both and like it's just so so dope work Thank you. No problem. We got to talk about what else you've been working on. The Odessa remix for Across the Room. What was that like? Long hair across the room. Baby, she got that gold. I know you see me over here. So that's all that was working, even though I enjoyed really making that track. That track particularly is some of my best work to date, like my best professional work for sure. Um, shout out to Odessa, shout out to Leon Bridges. I really enjoyed making something very, you know, like I said, I tried to be as simple as I possibly could with it. I, I didn't try to get too crazy. I just wanted people to really groove with it. And I actually particularly, out of that album, A Moment Apart, that's definitely my favorite track on the album, so I'm glad I got to remix that. They came to me like maybe like top of the year and asked, like reached out to me to do the remix. Obviously, we just put it out like uh, about a month ago or so, a little less than a month ago. And the track itself is very kind of like summertimey, you know, kind of poppy, kind of jam, whatever, but very well done. Really, you know, the video kind of also conveys that too. I heard something different once I heard the lyrics and once I heard this, you know, you know, listen to more Leon Bridges too. I wanted to bring out something more funky out of it, you know, something. And I can imagine what maybe other producers that were going to jump on and do the remix were going to do. I definitely knew that I was going to do something different. So I gave them some of that. I threw in some Atlanta, like, snap music somewhere in the middle, too. That, like, that was fun. It was cool. It was, just a, it was a dope little experience to just, just, you know, put together something like that for that audience, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, Odessa is huge, especially in, like, San Diego and stuff like that and, like, the EDM scene and stuff, or, like, in the electronic music scene. So it was, it was dope getting to put together something for them that, like, can cross both of our paths where it's not just the EDM crowd or it's not just the dance or, like, the, you know, selection crowd or the Future Beats crowd, but also kind of, like, it's it's everybody, you know? There's a little bit for, for everybody in there. Then we got to talk about Fonte's change of mind with Gangsta Gives. Wake up, who's ways never break up? 
I love it so much. Man, <laughs> I was so hyped to hear that he that Gibbs did, like, I produced a track for Freddie Gibbs. Yes! And I'm hoping that's not the last time that I get to do that. Obviously, shout out to Freddie, like, I got a batch when you're ready, like, always. So, Fonte, and I'm still tripping about this. <laughs> Sorry, he's definitely one of my top five favorite rappers. Mm -hmm. He, I don't even remember how or where he reached out, but he, he ended up with my email. We ended up texting eventually and then like getting to call each other to talk about it. I just kept sending him beats and then that was the result of that. We collaborated on the track, you know, to some extent, but for the most part, I just left it that track to him. We, before we finished it, we had talked in detail about the nature of the song itself, like what it was about. The little kind of reversing kind of hi-hat sound. Yeah, like a lot of tracks that I do, I, everything kind of centers around it and like you move forward with it from there. That was where he got the inspiration, I guess, to write the song. It was like how he put it together was was really dope. But I'm just like, damn, this is like this is what it's like working with a professional that gets how this stuff works. Like that's where I was getting at. Like you heard what I was trying to say. So that track and then Euphorium too was was very similar. But um, it was really dope. Like getting to to work with somebody who's uh, who you believe is of the same caliber as you. Mm -hmm. And being able to not having to downplay yourself or also not have to like dumb down, mm -hmm. you know, make things simpler for, for anybody. Like I, he understood where I was getting at. He's a producer himself, technically, you know. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, we talked about the track. We worked on it. However, we did towards the end. And then he said, hey, I'm putting this on the album. This is happening. And so now I have a working relationship with Fonte, which is incredible. Again, shout out to Fonte. Shout out to Zoe. Shout out to Foreign Exchange Music. Just thank you for putting me on, like, letting me produce a track. That was dope. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's, that's not even my favorite track in the album, which is crazy. <laughs> you know, which is funny. But, yeah, so it just happened. It was very natural. You know, it was dope just because it was basically through mutual friends, like, people that we both knew that made it happen, and which is pretty much the extent of my entire career. It's, like, people that I know just by word of mouth, fuck with what I do mm -hmm. and somehow some, something finally lands it's like okay I gotta hit him up so he hit me up it's like I need beats and the rest is history simple as that I love it too because you've worked with Carlita so it's like that same mm -hmm. realm of like North Carolina and all that <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. it just makes perfect sense but I love that he actually took the time to like have phone conversations with you because I feel like a lot of times people talk about like oh I sent him a batch of beats he picked one boom that's it actually having conversations right. about it is so cool to me yeah, yeah now I remember it was Carlita that connected both of us so and that was the same situation with her like we worked together it wasn't like I sent her a bunch of like beats like we FaceTime each other we Skyped each other to really just touch bases and talk about stuff same thing with Fonte we touched bases. we talked about it just so that we were on the same page and so we knew it's a really dope professional courtesy to be able to talk face to face with somebody even if it's just to say hey I really like this track I'm glad that we're doing this thank you for letting me produce this or thank you for letting me rap over or whatever you know what I'm saying like so like I said the experience is dope but it's even doper just knowing that like one of the people I looked up to you know and listened to music for as long as I can remember being a fan of them and a fan of hip hop in my you know formative years and shit <laughs> is coming out to tell me like I'm really like I'm tripping over how dope your beats are I'm like Pfft. I got more where that came from, you know what I'm saying? That's nothing. Uh, so, yeah, shout out to Fonte again. And there's more in the works. Let's just say that. You're asking if any upcoming, that's, there's definitely more that came from. We're talking. I love it. That's actually my ending question. Not to put pressure because we <laughs> we got the senior project. Like yeah. we talked about, we got to listen to it at least three, four more times. It's right. like a theme on this show is like after you listen to this podcast, you have to really go back and listen to these people's project because it's not surface level. It's way deeper. But we got to ask what's next i mean just obviously more music but i'm really trying to work on producing more i love putting out like instrumental projects but the focus for me from here on out is to be like really put on the actual producer hat not the abjo hat but literally the produced by abjo not abjo the centerpiece like here's his beats and blah 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 like i want to be collaborating with people a lot more in the next you know so that's that's what i'm doing i, I have stuff coming out solo stuff obviously but just expect to hear more 
you know, and seeing on the title of the songs produced by Abdul Born for stuff. So when stuff comes out, it's not just me like dropping a beat or something like that. It's definitely I'm working with people. I'm working with folks. I'm trying to make stuff happen. Yay. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. And thank you so much for checking out this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that follow or subscribe button on whatever you're listening on. I got tons of episodes coming up with Buddy, Guapped Out 4000, Reggie Snow, Odie, and so many more. So yeah, hit that follow or subscribe button and also reach out to me. Let me know what your favorite part was. I'm on Twitter at Special Says and on Instagram, it's at Special Says as well. As always, this episode is dedicated to Marlon. Do what you can to stop senseless acts of gun violence.